Good afternoon. My name is Jessica Jordan, and I will be giving your webinar today on the power of an authentic reading assessment, the new DRA-3 experience. On today's agenda, we are going to be covering what is an authentic assessment, benefits of an authentic assessment, the importance of conducting an authentic assessment, what is DRA, benefits of DRA, what's new with DRA-3, reading assessment process, professional learning, learning more about DRA-3, and if time permits, questions. I'd like to start off with a quote. I would suggest that our idea of reading is incomplete, impoverished unless we are also taking the time to read aloud. For Lynn Klinkenberg, she's part of the editorial board of the New York Times, and this is from May 2009. So even though this quote is 10 years old, it still holds true today. Oral reading is an essential part of the classroom as well as it is for educators because we often use oral reading as an instructional tool. So what is an authentic assessment? An assessment that's done with fidelity can be used as a compass to guide and promote success within the classroom. So an authentic assessment can help you drive your daily instruction. It'll help you support your learning, you can analyze this data also to help you drive your instruction, and it provides teacher accountability. Examples of an authentic assessment are writing a story and drawing a picture about it. So say you have a student in first grade and you want them to tell you about your weekend or tell you about their weekend. So you can learn about sequence, you can see anything that you've taught in regards to writing into their story. Creating an informational brochure, seeing if students can put together facts, book club discussions. I know this is a popular one in elementary schools where teachers will pool students during lunch or intervention time and discuss different books that they may be reading at the current time, and developing a character analysis. Benefits of a one-on-one -on -one assessment. Myself as an educator, hearing a student actually read to you is so key because you get to hear their strengths and weaknesses, for instance, you are going to be able to learn if a student is dropping endings or if they're having problems with the middle sounds. Just hearing that one-on-one -on -one time with that student is so important. It's going to help you know their reading level. This way you can take the student to your classroom library or to your school library and help them pick out a book that they'll be able to read without struggle. Tracking their progress. Is this student improving? What are their weak areas? How can you help them? It helps drive instruction, whether it's small group or whole group, and it's going to help you analyze, synthesize, and apply learned material. A key strategic solution. So it's going to help you identify key problems that your student may be having. So for instance, accountability. What is their percentage of mastery? Which students need extra support? Can you create groups from this data, whether it's in regards to the student's particular reading level or if it's according to skill? And it's going to help you with instructional strategies. As I said before, it's going to help you with whole group or shared reading. It's going to help you with small groups or skills-based and with differentiated instruction. So this is where the DRA comes in. The DRA is going to be able to help you with all of these things that we just discussed. It is an authentic assessment and it's a kindergarten to eighth grade classroom assessment. It has three decades of teacher expertise, and it promotes good reading behaviors. Our authors, Joetta Beaver and Dr. Mark Carter. Joetta Beaver, she states the number one goal of any reading program should be to help students become proficient, enthusiastic readers who read for a variety of purposes. And Dr. Mark Carter, who still is an educator to this day, the DRA was created to help students practice and improve important reading skills and to help teachers become connoisseurs of students as readers. Myself as a reading teacher, that is my goal. I want my student to be a connoisseur of reading. I want to help them to learn to love reading as much as I do, and the DRA is going to help you figure out these reading skills to make them better readers. So what are some benefits of DRA? It's a one-to-one -one assessment going to help you observe and document reading behaviors, going to help you establish student independent or instructional reading level. So with the independent, that's going to be the, the reading level that they are comfortable reading at, and instructional is where you're going to pull their instructional needs from. 
and identify each student's instructional needs. So what's new with DRA3? You spoke, we listened. We had a survey, and with this survey, we wanted to know your wish list of the DRA3. So with this, you're able to have an all-inclusive solution accessible in one kit. There are more fiction and nonfiction level books. There's improved teacher tools, new digital technology, more reporting options for administrators, teachers, and parents, and it provides on-demand professional learning. What's new? The new digital platform that we are going to be looking at later on in the presentation that assesses scores, reports, and maintains student records all in one place, a new level estimator, streamlined teacher guides, and online professional resources. So here is what's included in both kits, in both the kindergarten through third grade and the fourth through eighth grade. They're very similar, but there are just a few things that may be just a bit different. There's expanded book options. So this was news to my ears as an educator, because sometimes you'll have students who unfortunately will fail the actual assessment, and they will end up reading the same book over and over again. So now you have more options to each level. So there's, now we have nonfiction starting at the kindergarten level. We have over 100 benchmark assessment books. And with the K-3 to kit, you're going to have 74 book titles. And with the fourth to eighth grade kit, you're going to have 32 total book titles. So it says um, there's DRA reading levels 40 to 80 plus the intermediate bridge DRA levels 20 to 38. For those who don't know what the bridge DRA levels are, Often you have students who come into your school or to your district who currently don't read at the 40 level, which is fourth grade. So we have books down to the level 20, which is first, second grade, and you can figure out which books are more appropriate for that particular student. Benchmark books. So here's an example of the level 24, which is second grade, and this is Gardens Are Great. and Home at Last, which is level 50, which is a fifth grade book. So here's an example of the reading stages guide. You're going to see it starts at level A all the way to level 80, and it's going to show you which levels that we suggest the DRA be at for those particular grades. So for instance, you can see here in second grade, we want them coming in at a level 18 and leaving at a level 28. New level estimator. So this is brand new. This is going to help you with students who are brand new to your school or to your district, and you will be timing them for 60 seconds. And what you will do, you will have the student read, and then once they get six in a row incorrect, that is where you're going to start assessing them at. So for instance, say you start at Beard, the student, I'm sorry, you start and the student starts getting the words incorrect at beard and ends at league. Those are six words. From there, the level estimator will tell you which level that you should start assessing the student at. Streamlined record forms. So now you have this all on one page. Before you used to have to flip back and forth, but now everything is streamlined and you can have your record form on one single page. And here you can see you have your oral reading fluency, comprehension, overall performance, and what you will be focusing on for the focus for instruction and then the continuum. The new digital platform. So we have a new consolidated digital offering. You can do your data entry administration in the platform. You have more reporting options and you can store your students' data inside the platform. Here's an example of the home class list. You will see this once I get into the platform. Student action plan. This is nice, especially if you have a parent-teacher conference or if you're meeting with different administrators or reading coaches, you can show them where exactly that student is at and what their current action plan is. Here's another example of the student action plan. So this show, the green here shows the student has met their target. If the student fell below, you would see a red and then you would see the green because that's where you would want the student to fall. Here's another example of the student action plan. So this is where you're going to decide as the teacher what you're going to be focusing on. So for instance here, we have the oral reading fluency. 
this particular teacher is going to monitor using one-to-one -one correspondence. And with printed language concepts, they're going to focus on directionality and concept of a letter and a word. More reports. We now have class roster report, student action plan, the student assessment history and assessment instance results are updated, which is wonderful for longitudinal data. We have a brand new parent report, which you can send home with a student or you can give during a student or teacher, a parent teacher conference, apologies. Student performance over time has been updated as well as your class skills summary and your school district benchmark scoring report and your school district data across seasons and across the years is brand new. And class skills summary is a wonderful report to use during your instruction because you can see where your students' strengths or weaknesses are according to certain skills. So for instance, say you have inferencing and you see that 12 out of your 16 students are having trouble with inferencing. You can see there that you, need, you most likely will want to do a whole group lesson or say it was only two or three students who are having trouble with inferencing from there, you would know that you would pull those, those particular students for a small group instruction on inferencing. The reading assessment process. So we're going to start with the benchmark assessment. So with the first step, before we had a different first step, it was reading engagement, but that has been moved to the end as optional. So here you're going to select each student's level for assessment, and this is where you would either use the level estimator if it's a brand new student, or you're going to review the student's history. So you can look at the student's DRA folder, see where the last instructional was, or in last independent, and then you're going to start assessing from that particular level. Step two is the oral reading. This is when the student reads to you. So the student will have the student booklet in front of them. This will be your piece of paper in front of you. And what's nice is that everything is on one page now. So you can see on the right-hand side that the column is there for everything that you need to mark off from missed cues to the amount of time it took the student to read. Here is step three, the printed language concepts comprehension. So with the younger grades, you are going to ask the questions to the student. But once you get to a certain level in the second grade, then you can send the student after they're done reading to go work on the questions at their desk. Step four is the teacher analysis. So this is where you're going to put all of the data from the student's assessment into this one page to figure out their score and where they landed, whether it's advanced, independent, instructional, or intervention. Reading engagement. So this used to be step one. This is where you get to know your students' reading behaviors. If they read at home, who they read with at home, what's their favorite book. Me, in particular, I liked doing this in the beginning of the school year, especially because it helped me get to know the students better. And for those students who are always saying, oh, I don't like reading, reading stinks, this is where you can go and look and see, okay, this student likes tigers. I know when it's library time, I can go to the library with that student with the particular reading level in mind and help them pick out a book that they're actually going to enjoy. Progress monitoring. Step one, so we have the progress monitoring in the kit now, and this will be done. This is all housed online. So you're going to give an oral reading fluency assessment. You're going to analyze and record the student's oral reading. You're going to record and score, so you're going to monitor their comprehension. And now is where the in-depth progress monitoring comes in. So here, you're going to figure out the specific skills or strategies that the student has to work on. And then we provide different examples of instruction that you can do with a particular student for this intervention. So this is a nice thing to do during your intervention block. So you don't have to go and put materials together. You're going to have this all here for you. Word analysis. So step one, you're going to assess their word analysis skills and strategies. So it's a 40-word analysis. And we provide the instructions and scoring guidelines for you. You're going to provide the instructions. So you're going to look at the skills that the student needs help with, and you're going to highlight on these specific skills. And then you're going to perform the task-specific activities. So this also comes with a word analysis, mini lessons, learning activities, 
where you can also do this during intervention or you can do it during small group if you have a big enough group of students who are having problems with this specific skill. And then I'm going to show you a brief online demo. Give me one second. Okay. Sherry, can you give me control again of the desktop? Okay, I'm going to try it one more time. You may be having technical difficulties with the. Okay, unfortunately, let me see. Oh, here we go. Can you see it, Sherry? Yes. Okay, okay, perfect. So here is an example. I'm going to go to home, and this is what your screen would look like. So this is a teacher screen. This is my class. These are the names of my nephews. This is not their real data. And here I'm going to go in. You'll see right here. On the top right-hand corner, it's going to give you your season, 1920, so it tells you what semester we're actually working in or what marking period or what season, how many benchmarks have been completed in my classroom, students currently meeting benchmarks, so I have one at below, and then I'm going to go over here to student ID. There you would have your student ID, your student's name. I'll click on Jose. You're going to see he was below target. So he fell at an independent reading level 40. Because he's in grade five, he should be at a level 50. But we often see students at this time of year at a reading level 40, and then they move up, and then they pass into a reading level 50 by the end of the year. So here you can see the example, not met target. His independent is 40. Level 38 is what we read. His accuracy, his reading rate. Here, his oral reading fluency comprehension. And here's an example of the red. He did not meet targets. So he's at a level 38, supposed to be a level 40, but he did read the correct words per minute. I'm going to go back. I'm going to show you on the bottom. Here is where you would see for online support. This is where you would get your training videos. So you would go to getting started and you'd click on training videos. And here, you would be able to click. So say you don't remember how to conduct a benchmark, a second grade benchmark. So you would click on the video, Conducting the Benchmark Assessment K-3, to and there's Brain Shark videos in there for you to watch. Go back in. Here you can see one thing that I'd like to mention is that here I'm going to press Resume Assessment. You can actually record the student as they're reading. So you're going to press Start Assessment. You would click on that. The timer would start. And then here, if the student has a miscue, I'll just start it so you can see. You have a miscue. You can choose omission, revision, reversal, teacher prompt, etc. And here's an example: insertion, omission, reversal, and there it will tell you how many there are per miscue. So say he had two omissions and he had three substitutions. It would be all analyzed right here for you. This is actually recording me as I'm reading, but you can record the student as they're reading, and then when they're finished, finish assessment. And the nice thing is you can if, say the student is nervous and you can sense they're nervous and they're reading extremely fast. You can tell them to pause, take a break, and you can have them restart. So here you can restart oral reading fluency. And then it asks you to confirm, and then I would say yes. If you decide to do paper and pencil and then put in the data later on, you would just click on not real-time administration right there, and then you would put in all the information so that everything is saved for you in the platform. Oh, let me go back. 
So here you're going to see student assessment history. So this is where the longitudinal data would be held. There you can launch your benchmark assessment. So here's where you can decide which book you would be starting at. And you would have all the, all the different fiction and nonfiction books housed in, here in the platform, and it provides the additional materials. So that would be your teacher observation guide. And then there would be everything you need for the assessment, and then you could print it out. So that is all on my end. You can back to you, Sherry, so we can go back to the screen. All right, so only a few more slides. for professional learning. So we do have professional learning available for your schools and your districts. You can do the on-demand learning modules, which are accessible via the new digital platform. And we also have paid professional development, where we would have one of our DRA3 trainers come on-site or give you a webinar training. So you have options of on-site and webinar. And that is it. So thank you very much for your time today. We appreciate you coming. If you have any questions that Erin has not answered in the live platform, we will be sure to email you the response to your question. Thank you very much.